to die, to be really dead, that must be glorious. Why, well, Count Dracula? There are far worse things, waiting man, than that, 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 that. Howdy, everybody. And uh, Shalom and Ohuru. It's all our brothers and sisters out there. Uh, welcome to the Bunsen Burner Recordings Podcast, Episode 12. I'm listening. <laughs> and today... <laughs> Always with the Fraser. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And today, uh, joined by my co-host, as always, uh, Gargantua 2 and the Pillsbury Do-Gooder. <laughs> I don't know which is which, but it's better than Flapjack Fuckface, so I'll take it. Flapjack oh, I'm a fan fuckface. of that. Can I take that one? Please. Great. And we have a guest today, Mrs. As, as you can oh, tell. Cool. That's me. Hi, Hope. It's Miss, but Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so um hope just so uh wait so so what do i call you do i call you hope or do i call you mist hope is great yeah please hope don't miss fine. me <laughs> oh okay 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 or or so, both miss hope miss hope. yeah let's yeah, not miss hope. Hope is, is gonna is go last... with bro <laughs> bro is your last, bro. Name, is your last is cool. name pronounced gold or Gould, how is it pronounced? Gould, yeah, Gould. Gould, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, a singer from uh, the band Rare Bird from the 70s. His name was Steve Gould. I don't know if you've ever there you heard go. of them. Most people say like Bob Gould or Elliot Gould, but I'll take that. Who's Elliot Gould? I don't know why that sounds familiar. It, you know what? I actually don't know. The name sounds familiar because people say it to me and I'm like, sure, let's go with that. Yeah, it, it did remind me of uh, the singer Steve Gould from... Um, rare bird if anybody doesn't know i don't know if you're into uh like 70s prog rock at all a little bit i like my yes yeah i was about to say rare bird is probably on the same level as uh yes as probably the two best uh bands in that genre i'm more of a no kind of guy <laughs> you're a no man like jim carrey in that movie no man no man no man <laughs> <laughs> That's actually how I feel a lot of the time. People want me to do things, and I just say no. So I just nope. the op. Yeah, no, no. Yep. It's a complete apparently, sentence. Apparently, Bob Gould is an ice ice hockey player. Ah, that makes sense. But yeah, give unless rare they meant that Bob Gould Bird was an excellent Australian band. activist excellent and singer. bookseller. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, maybe just as an introduction, hope. Um, can you tell us a little bit uh, for the listeners who may may not know? Uh, what do you do? Uh, maybe what's some of the latest uh, work that you've done, and uh, how did you how did you get into uh, whatever it is that we're uh, going to talk about here? Sure. I mean, first and foremost, I'm just a person on the internet who likes metal. <laughs> um, but occasionally, I do get to write for No Clean Singing, um, which is honestly just a privilege and super fun. Um, so I'll do album reviews. I've done a few interviews for them as well. Um, most recently, I worked with the Covenant Circle um, here in Vancouver, Canada for the Covenant Festival. Um, and I did a series of interviews for some of the bands who uh, were on the lineup this year. So that was really cool. Um, I think probably the biggest one that came out of that was interviewing um, Gavura. Um, I did the Ominous Circle, Warp Chamber, just a few really cool bands. and. Um, kind of started because I have a friend who runs his own independent blog and about uh, about two years ago now um, he had mentioned to me that he liked some of my writing I had written some blogs on some other subjects and um, he asked me if I wanted to do a guest spot on his blog to which I said yes so I reviewed um, that year's Vigadur um, album had a lot of fun with that and my um, boyfriend uh, now fiance um rights for your last rights and he had floated the idea to me about pitching some of my writing around um eventually i landed with ncs so i've been doing that when i have the time and when there's an album that speaks to me and i want to write about okay yeah i was going to ask uh, how did you get into it so your boyfriend uh, actually helped uh, with the no clean singing yeah gig, he's had right? a lot of connections for a lot of years so i was very lucky that way <laughs> All right. Oh, and a great big congratulations on the um, engagement, too. 
Thank you. Um, so I had uh, this is kind of a generic question, but um, maybe not a generic question, but kind of uh, <laughs> jumping off point. Um, how, how exactly did you get into uh, just metal in general? Like, what's uh, how did you start listening to this stuff and really getting interested in um, in uh, this whole thing? Oh, that's a, a loaded question. Um, it is. It so... is. It, but we can kind of go <laughs> off. We can kind of go off of that. We'll all kind of yeah. chime in here. Cool. No, that'd be great. Um, yeah. So I actually grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. Um, so ah. metal. Yeah. So metal music was not really my forte um, or really on my radar. Um, with that said, I did start to teach myself to play guitar when I was about 14. And so I found that when I was looking up tabs, um, Metallica tabs were some of the fun ones for me to learn. Um, so I slowly kind of got, you know, bits and pieces of metal here and there, Metallica, early Iron Maiden, stuff like that. Um, but it wasn't until quite a few years later after I had left the religion um, that I actually got into it through um, an ex-boyfriend of mine <laughs> who um, has been involved in black metal for quite some time. Um, and he kind of started introducing me to stuff and taking me to shows. Um, the first album that I had listened to front to back um, for like as far as black metal goes was um, Gorgroth, Qantas, whatever the fuck. Um, <laughs> and it really just like, I remember it blowing my mind at the time um, because not only like was Pat's vocals just incredible. I remember like listening to the riffing and thinking like, you can fucking do that. Um, just totally blew my mind. Um, and so, yeah, ever since then I, I've had, um, I've just kind of dove in. I have a really obsessive personality. So when I get into something, I get into it 110%. And um, there's really not a day that has went by since that I haven't done some type of reading or checked out some type of new band. Okay. I, I don't think I've ever heard that album from a uh, Gorgoroth. I mean, th these guys probably know I'm not super, uh, I, I don't exactly know a lot of Gorgoroth stuff. I think the first three albums are what I'm familiar with, like Pentagram and Antichrist. And then, uh, yeah, the that one with the, yeah, the those the are the better ones anyway. On yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think well, Qantas had, uh... was was interesting because that's when Gore when Gore Groth, when Infernus got control of the band back after the uh, the feud right. with uh, Gaul and uh, King of Hell. That's um, not the that's not when they had to go to court, is it? It's after that. That's after they got the uh, the rights to the name back. Okay, because I, I know one of the newer albums could come out. This is already like fifteen years ago, but it was uh, Pest who had came back. Yeah, that's on. Uh, yeah, that Pandos. that's the one. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, you, you know, know it's, now it's I know it's not their was, best. <laughs> um, I mean, it's still a good album, but I, I I just love that during the whole legal proceedings, one of the, um, like, I think it was uh, Gaul, maybe it was King of Hell, I forget which one, but maybe both, uh, registered the name The Force Gorgoroth so they could continue under that. I'm like, guys, it's time to give up. <laughs> it's like the no, true no. mayhem, huh? <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I I did like the uh, the singer's name. I think it was on the first two albums. Hat, this dude Hat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. And yeah, I like his uh, band picture too, with he's like swinging that uh, fucking flail thing. Cool hat, bro. Yeah, cool hat, man. Anyways, um, so did did you just kind of start listening to metal and just jump right into black metal, or is there kind of um? a genre that you were interested in before that, or did you just kind of get into the extreme stuff first? Yeah, as, as crazy as it sounds, it was, um, you know, other than the initial preliminary listening that I did to Metallica and some early thrash stuff, um, it right, was right. black metal was, was really my introduction and kind of like what I fell in love with. And ever since then, I've kind of been putting the puzzle together about what came before that and, you know, what's inspired it and things like that. So I've kind of worked my way backwards in a sense, but it's been a really fun journey the last few years. Gotcha. So it goes from Metallica to uh, Norwegian black metal. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Um, all right. Well, with that, uh, what are we covering today? This is your pick. And uh, what can you tell us about uh, Hail? It is my pick. Yeah. So um, I chose Inheritance of Evilness, um, which came out in 2003 by the Finnish black metal band Hale. Um, it's actually a solo project by a one dirt master 
um, who yeah, is probably master. best known. Yeah, he's probably best known for drums and vocals in um, Funeral Doom band Worm Phlegm. Um, he's had a few other projects. I think the most similar to Hale is probably Death Citadel to my ears. Um, I heard that exception. for the first time, uh, like a couple days ago. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's wack cool, stuff. hey. Yeah, I really um, like the uh, intro in that. Same. It's kind of. It's very abrupt. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody was saying that in the comments that it's like abrupt and worship. Totally. Yeah, so Inheritance of Evilness came out um, on Barbarian Wrath, um, 666 copies as one does. And at the time, it was described as the insane bastard child of Beherit and Varthron, which is pretty accurate, especially considering it has the Varthron cover on it. Um, Barbarian Wrath, of course, being a phenomenal label with big guns at the time, like Countess and Megiddo and Grave Worm. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. You know uh, how you were just talking about Death Citadel. I wanted to bring up uh, something that was said in the intro of that. Like, do you remember? It, it's like kind of them walking through the woods and kind of just talking. It's mm -hmm. like it sounds like it's two guys, but it might just be uh, Dirt Master by himself. But he <laughs> says in like the Finnish <laughs> accent, he says, uh, "It's a fucking journey through the dark woods." <laughs> And then they like meet up with some demons or some aliens or something, and he, he straight up says, "Greetings from Earth." I like that. <laughs> I missed that, but I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's right at the beginning of the Death Citadel uh, album. Yeah, Dirt Master is a weird guy. He certainly has a sense of humor. Yeah. So, uh, kind of with the introduction as well, uh, you know, uh, as a reviewer, what what can you really tell us about this album? What are some of the sounds going on and uh, maybe an in-depth uh, kind of synopsis of uh, what's happening here. Sure. Um, I mean, first of all, you'll notice that the song structures are pretty interesting. There's some long tracks on it. I think the longest is just over 16 minutes. It's uh, ancient fucking black metal. Um, pretty hypnotic, but heavy as balls. Like it's... <laughs> It has a really demented kind of groove to it. It really kind of, it builds an intensity as well, which I really appreciate. And my favorite part is his vocals. Um, kind of like a brutal death metal growl with like the occasional just crazed outburst. Um, it's mid-paced for the most part. Um, there are some faster parts, especially in the second track, which I, I think that we'll be listening to. Um, but yeah, it really doesn't go much past a mid-paced groove for the most part yeah there's some uh there's some like wild blasting parts i kind of like how this sounds a bit sloppy with the drumming i think that kind of adds yeah. to the uh, occult yeah. feeling of it yeah absolutely i think like the first track especially is where you hear a lot of the beharit influences it's a very kind of deconstructs into like a uh, the gate of nana atmosphere yeah, I noticed um, that. It's it's the most like simplistic track. I, I totally think, the first one. Yeah, but there's also a bit of um, what's that? Uh, Barthroom in the the primal kind yeah, of. Yeah, I was dry hearing that too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because they have the kind of like bass intro thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of. It starts kind of with an awkward spoken word acoustic intro that I've come to love. Um, but it kind of lumbers into it. It's like being told a story. Yeah, yeah very much so. Yeah, this one does feel a bit more, uh, like, mostly a cult. I, I guess, is Sam Elf fair to say? Like a Sam Elf kind of sound? Hell no. Hell no? <laughs> <laughs> you no. don't think so? I don't no, know really hear much of that. No. Yeah. A bit, but um, Wouldn't not too much as like, -to. yeah, I was, you know, definitely bare the vocals and, uh, you know, Barathon obviously with the the riffs, but I have a few other um What about Demon Does that make sense for the vocals? Yeah. Yeah. I also yeah, thought uh, Nocturnal Blood, too, because the vocals are almost too brutal for this style. It feels like. Uh, you know what they remind me of? I uh, remember the vocals on uh, Satanic Blood from Vaughn. Mm, yeah. Like, 
<laughs> yeah, exactly, because they're constantly <laughs> echoing too, right? So, yeah. and they're fairly deep on Satanic Blood as well. So, that uh, that's usually what I think of when I hear the vocals on here, and Beharit a bit, especially on um, Dawn of Satan's my name. Yeah, I, I always yeah. found it interesting, like kind of getting into. Uh, I, I want to compare this to like Greek black metal because that's basically what you kind of could do. Yeah, but I w always found it interesting that. Um, the music itself almost sounds like pretty much like a traditional heavy metal, but like evil, just a mm -hmm. slightly evil traditional heavy metal. And the vocals always seem mm -hmm. too brutal for that. And kind of in the sense of like black and death metal, this style almost feels regressive, but that's kind of cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I always just thought that yeah, was cool. I think you're totally right about the, the traditional metal. I actually hear a lot of Merciful Fate in this. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's totally fair. I think I hear that more in the Bestial Storms of the Abyssic Pit demo. It sounds a lot more Greek to me than the yeah, album does. That one's yeah. definitely like way one, more Necromantia, I feel like, with the bass yeah. heavy end. Yeah, I think it's like the second track. I think the second track, just like right out the gates, total Varathron riff. Oh, yeah. How'd you uh, come across this album, Hope? I don't remember this. So Fred and I have been friends for a few years, and um, he's been feeding me metal for years. But this is one, or for a few <laughs> years anyway. Um, but this is, yeah, <laughs> literally. Wait, 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 Almost. pause. Fred has friends? <laughs> Just kidding. I, I'm as shocked as you are. <laughs> 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 um, there really hasn't been many days that have gone by, at least within the last two years, that Fred hasn't given me some type of a gem. But this is one of few that I actually knew prior um, to talking to Fred. I love Finnish black metal. It's it's where my, my heart lies for the most part. We love um, Fred. And, hey, he's, he's all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so it's one of few that I came across. And I don't remember how I would have come across it. Probably from Wormflem probably just kind of did the you know metal archives thing and came across it that way but um it was one that stuck with me right away all right uh paulus you wrote some notes right yeah i got some fragments. and yeah you know about the I, album, I, though, right? no, I didn't i didn't know what <laughs> i didn't know who hale was fred brought this up uh two episodes twice. ago yeah, yeah repeatedly like, yeah 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 he brought it up once, we said we hadn't heard it, and then we did our first guest show with um, Roman from Cromlech, and he asked, did you guys listen to the Hale album? And I said, no. He goes, do it now. And he threatened me. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure that he threatened Hope to pick this, right? <laughs> he didn't, actually. I, I messaged him, and I was like, hey, have you guys talked about this album? Because him and I have shared our, our love of it before, and he was like, no, but I did threaten them to listen to it, so I thought it would be <laughs> appropriate. Yes, Fred did. said, I ain't mad about Didn't it. Didn't I though. basically strong arm you into buying them when I found a guy that has them on? Yeah, actually. <laughs> um, we should talk about that. So, um, yeah, I do have a original Barbarian Wrath um, copy of the CD. Um, and actually, I have um, the entire Hale discography, which uh, by the entire discography, I mean the other two demos. Oh. Um, and Fred uh, sent me a link. No, he had mentioned to me, oh, by the way, there's a guy who lives close to you on Discogs that's selling them. And that was my first ever Discogs purchase, and it has since started a very slippery slope. So thank you, Fred, it's dangerous, for that. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. God. Did 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 you did you go meet the guy, or did you just like get it ordered to your house? No, I just had it ordered to my house, but I've placed two orders from the guy since. And oh, I was gonna uh, say since he was close, like that's that's a dangerous game. He says meet some guy. <laughs> no, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> he ships super I fast mean, though, doesn't he? He does. Yeah, and that's the thing. I'm it's like, I'm it's in like Vancouver, an Uber and to he, your house. Yeah, I think it took like, uh, it was less than a week, four or five yeah. days, so can't complain. No, it's good. Yeah, but with that, uh, I, I was, uh, I think I didn't even mention it, but I was going to say, uh, yeah, we hadn't heard this thing before. I was familiar with Worm Phlegm, but for whatever reason, I never really uh, delved into um, kind of who, who these members are and what else they did. I was kind of surprised that like some of the the dirt master shit it's like i don't know there's a lot of it and a lot of it is really cool and a lot of it is really like kind of a retro throwback way before that's even a thing is what is this yeah. come out in 2003 mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, yeah but I'll, I'll get into all guy. that stuff uh, in a little bit. But Paul, I, I wanted to ask you since I hadn't heard from you too much. Uh, what did you think? Because I heard you had some hot takes, possible hot <gasps> takes. Ooh, juicy. Hot comparisons Ooh, more than takes. Um, oh, just comparisons. Oh. Yeah. So lay it on right, me, boo. <laughs> no, um, I thought when I was no, listening. Lay it on. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Hey, you ready, Fred? All right. Um, hey, hang on. Hang on. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> so, yeah, first initial listens, you know, this is a fucking hour long. And these songs are, you know, I think they reach about, what, the longest 16 minutes or so. With that fourth track or the third one. But, um, yeah, so I was, I was going through it listening you know just hearing you know what this whole deal is about because i've heard uh fred's uh comparison of it of uh you know the clash between beherit and verathron that's what it says on youtube yeah and i've seen that also on uh, you know some reviews on um on metal archives as well and when i was listening to it you know i heard all those comparisons and it seemed you know like that was kind of all that it was giving but then the more and more that I was listening to it, like, you could tell this guy is, like, a huge fucking, like, just metal fan and giving homage to, you know, these big, great scenes and, like, combining it in a way that hasn't been really done before. No, no, I don't think so either. It's totally original sounding. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, there's not only those um, those things that uh, I was hearing, you know, Greek metal and shit like that. But, you know, I heard, like, a little bit of uh, Vlad Tepes in there, you know, Ooh, and yeah. obviously uh, Angel Cun EP from uh, Archgoat. You think uh, so? Yeah, yeah oh, definitely. Because yeah. yeah, they're, they're way more, like, heavy metal based riffing. Like, even, it seems like the Verathron riffs where, you know, they're on, like, the third or fourth string. Um where the arch go riffs, it seems like they're on like the top string doing those doing, same doing exact kind riffs. Of the same thing. Yeah. Okay, I get you. Yeah. So, I, like, I hear a lot of a, a lot of like heavy metal, just in that at the bass, and even a little bit of thrash. We'll hear in the the second song where it has like that weird little tapping riff towards the end of the track. Like mm-hmm. it, it it goes like all over the place, and it seems like a stream of consciousness sort of writing. But I don't know if you know how this guy recorded it did he do guitar first did he do you know drums uh lay out an outline and then record it uh, live obviously and i think i hear a little bit more of him trying to find that formula on the the demos that came out uh, i guess one was 2001 and then the two songs were 2002 or something like that and um i was hearing him kind of putting that formula together and like actually mastering it on this album because you can hear a little bit of like the corporate uh um like graveland type drumming on their shit where it's Mm -hmm. like a little bit sloppy but you know he's like technical enough to pull off what he's doing he's not just like keeping time like he was in warm phlegm he's like doing fills and uh pretty intricate beats actually and um yeah i was you know to pull this off as like a one-man project is like you know sort of you know astounding you know it it was a really great listen for me and you know i'm going to be listening to this for a long time because there's a lot to to take from it that's so, awesome like, glad to hear yeah, kind that's... of reminded me of uh, nocturnal blood a little bit with kind of again with the like one-man uh band comparison kind of doing mm-hmm. the uh like occult metal but i think nocturnal blood is a little bit more on the demon sea side mm-hmm. but uh what were you gonna say fred i think i interrupted you uh Buoy. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> <Baba Bui>. yeah. <laughs> more family guy references i mean i can go off about this album for hours but i wasn't oh I wasn't dude say anything go, go i wasn't ahead, about man. to say anything in particular at that point <laughs> no 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 go ahead uh what do you got to say fred what do we have uh, well as the resident geriatric, uh, I was actually around when this was released uh, and listening to the to this shit. Uh, when it was new? I, yeah. Whoa. So hipster. And so was I. Cool. Um, You're not a hipster, are you? No, I don't think so. Yeah, what is a hipster? Uh, 
I have what avocado that, toast sometimes. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. All right. Hope, what was that band you just posted? Uh, what the hell were they called? Today? No, no. A few days ago, some like hipster looking guys with the uh, short pants and the... oh, agriculture. Oh, agriculture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was not happy about that at all. Yeah. Great what would you compare name. that to? Would you compare that to like Deaf Heaven or something? Weezer. Yeah. Weezer. <laughs> if Weezer did Deaf Heaven, with yeah. Jimmy. A little bit of Holy Fawn. Terrible shit. No good yeah. stuff. I I listened to it and I mean, it sounds like generic Cascadian third generation. Yeah, there you go. The Cascadian sort of stuff. thing that. That has to do with kind of like Wolves in the Throne Room, right? Yeah. Well, they call it ecstatic black metal. Yeah, they call themselves odd. ecstatic black just metal. Just about the worst thing that I can imagine. It's the first the album is DSBM. far worse than... Yeah. Yeah. The first album is far worse than what they just released. And yes, I tortured myself by listening to both. Anyway, Fred, I would love to hear so, you sounds go like a about... <laughs> 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 Please tell us about Dirt Master. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, it's funny. I When it came out, I remember it kind of like sounded like a fist in the face of Finnish black metal because nothing, like this was like when Sargeist, Behexen, you know, all those bands. Horn yeah, it Hour sounds were, nothing were like fucking up. any of that Finnish shit. Like Finnish nothing. black metal. Absolutely That French nothing. shit doesn't sound anything like it. And, nope. and also, what, what Finnish bands sound Greek? Thromdar. Mm. Oh, yeah fucking the skepticism uh side project yep oh yeah that's the only does. only other but band i can a, think that one's of later no wait, that's 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 like 95 isn't it i, the think album I mean came not, out like this is much more deliberate though the first album came out in 2000 yeah it was like from, oh, from the, yeah. So it was, yeah they were around for a long time they're like they formed in like 89 or something but uh their first album only came out in 2000 so it was um fairly close proximity to hell wait but, so when uh, does when does Dirt Master uh, start making music? Is it with Worm Flem or is it before that? Uh, roughly Worm early Flem. 2000s, I think. Early 2000s. So Worm Flem might be like the first project that he does, right? Yeah, not by not by a long period, but might have been the first one, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, go ahead, dude. Hail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, no. And a friend of mine told me to to check it out, and I was. I was a big fan of Barbarian Wrath, and it, it sucks that he's gone. But uh, Cheryl has picked up the uh, flag of the uh, of the label. They're hoping to make it to a hundred releases, but only use bands that were signed to the to the label, which is going to be difficult. But um, now, in any case, my, a friend of mine told me to check it out, um, and I had heard some of his other projects. Um, Legacies on Chain that had been floating around online for a while, and that's a really cool recording um but when i first heard hail i didn't know what to make of it it sounded like death metal it sounded like black metal but wasn't really firmly in either camp uh but but my god is it hypnotic like every track on there just draws you right in uh and tells a story and just takes you on this journey uh it's it's fantastic it, it's Still one of my favorite albums from post-2000. It's probably top 10, if not top 5. Hell yeah. Just The only thing that bothers me, and I've probably heard said this before to all of you. Choose your words it, carefully, it commits, Fred. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Don't worry. It's not It's not a, a huge crime, but... Well, it is kind of for me, but... Fred. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Um, All the they put a cover words. right in the middle of the album, and I fucking hate that. Mm. It's one of my top pet peeves for any album. Like, where would you rather it be? At the end. Okay. Yeah. If if it's like, in well though, like the next song, it it sounds like it's like right from the Verathon album too. You know. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. They pull it off better than most. Um, when I think of uh, Obituaries, Cause of Death, and the uh, the Celtic Frost, Celtic Frost cover right in the middle that just completely breaks the flow of the album. That just pisses me off to no end. And this one at least 
uh, fits in seamlessly with the style of the album. But the problem for me is I already know that song. And so when I hear it, I think, oh, right, this is Varathron, not Hail. So, so it kind of takes me out of it for a bit. And that um, mm -hmm. even though it fits in perfectly, it's performed perfectly, because I know it's not them, I start thinking about that and it just kind of takes me out of it a little bit. So that's the really the only negative thing I have to say about this album. I wish I put the cover at the end and then I wouldn't have to think about it when it uh, when it comes up. That goes for you too, obituary. What the fuck? How do you feel about the cover in comparison to the original? Because I personally prefer this version. It's probably blasphemous I, to say. I do prefer the original, um, but I had known the original for a while prior to that, right? So it's um, it, it's not fair. It, it's hard when you know an original uh, for a while and then hear the cover and for the cover to ever take over yeah. um, the original. So I think it's executed perfectly. Um, would I say I prefer it to the original? No, but not through any fault of their own. Just because the original has that nostalgia and uh, attachment to me. All right, you can live another day. Oh, thank God. How do you feel about covers, Paul? I, I, I think me and you kind of both have the same uh, opinion about that, where it's like, well, for us at least, I, I feel like cause people always want us to do covers when we do kind of uh, little side project and things. There's always people who want to do covers. People ask you to do covers? Yeah. <laughs> what do you people respond do to that? What, what, are we that bad? <laughs> My response is just like, no, why? I, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to do a cover. It's like, what's, what's the point? We already went through our cover phase. Yeah, we did. We, we went through our cover phase when we first started. As, and, as one would. Yeah. It's like, why, why would we continue to do that? And I, I don't know how it goes with other bands and doing covers. Maybe they just want to pay homage or something. But I, I always feel like it's a kind of a waste of time. <laughs> I feel on, like on, I, I just tell do. us how you really feel, though. Do. That's how I really feel. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like you, you know you're you're paying homage to you know the bands that you're taking influence from and you know progressing that style and your own you know, forward rather than, you know, just recording a song that was done already the, probably isn't perfectly. The, isn't the homage already kind of playing in that style, though? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, but, you can weave the influences into your music rather than just playing the cover. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say, I mean, I guess, my, on the flip side, I guess covers can be fun to play. It's a song you know and like, and you just enjoy banging covers, it out. Okay, I'll, uh, to, to, to defend what you just said, covers are good for live shows. Mm -hmm. I don't think covers need to be uh, recorded on an album. Yeah, catch it on the live album. That'll be better. <laughs> you guys I was remember say, Alien Farm? <laughs> I actually love that cover. Yeah, that's a, great, <laughs> that's a cover. great cover. But, I mean, how shitty must it be to only be famous for a song you recorded that was originally by someone else? <laughs> I don't think it's that shitty for, for Alien Ant Farm just because... Well, I'll say this too. I don't know any other songs by Alien Ant Farm. Exactly. But, but, this is kind of a, I, I don't want to call it new metal. What do, you, what do you even call that kind of music? A butt rock version of butt Smooth rock. Criminal. <laughs> and when I first, yeah, when I first heard that, uh, I, I was really young. I, I think I was still in middle school when I first heard that song. And okay. I don't, I don't think, yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Fuck. But I, I didn't realize it we was get even it. a cover. We get it. I'm old. No, no. That's not <laughs> what I was getting at. You brought it up. You said, oh, God. <laughs> it was implied. Yeah, but um, I, I didn't know that was a cover when I first heard it. And I just thought it was a cool song. And then I think maybe like not too much longer later, I heard uh, Smooth Criminal on the radio. I said, hey, Michael Jackson, Smooth Criminal. But that's Michael the whole Jackson point. guy ripped off Alien Ant Farm. Yeah, no, but that's the whole point. It's like, you, <laughs> what a dick. I think, if there are covers, it kind of needs to be in the context of really good production and really different uh, style. So just a really different style. Yeah, maybe like the maybe fucking, like Exhume doing the Madonna cover, uh, Material Girl, or something like that. That and I think my favorite cover is probably uh, Anal Cunt, uh, Killing Yourself <laughs> to Live. Uh, 
by Black Sabbath, you know, because they do it like, you know, in their own style where it's like actually entertaining to hear. And, um, you know, speaking on Alien Ant Farm, you know, there's fucking... What have I done? <laughs> there's like, uh, you know, the song Hurt that everyone thinks is Johnny Cash's song, but that was right. like originally, uh, no, Nine Inch no, Nails. Nine Inch Nails. Oh, it's Nine Inch Nails? I'm an asshole. Hey, yeah. Even Trent Reznor says it's not his song anymore. <laughs> yeah, because he, you know, performed it in a completely different way where it's like, how, how does that feel? <laughs> you know, like to get your song covered... And, you know, Owned. people prefer that more than the original. <laughs> you know? Although Pearl Jam did the last Kiss cover, and that was, I don't know, some country song to begin with. So maybe that's what you were thinking. Yeah, that was probably Dan thinking about that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but like, we, like when we covered shit... <laughs> <laughs> like, when we would cover songs, it would mainly be, like, shit that we didn't hear other people, you know doing so we did like lubricant and um nice cataclysm uh, zizma um Recubes. interment yeah vomitorition uh x dementia did you try to pass them off as your own like metallica did oh no, no we, we never <laughs> yeah, <really did>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no the, these were just um i think these were just covers that we did on our youtube channel just like um just as like a live uh, rehearsal video are they still up I, they're still up. They're still on this channel. Excellent. We'll be listening yeah, all, to them all our, all our old stuff is still on the YouTube channel. We'll just unlist them really quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me make them private real quick. <laughs> and they're gone. I should say, I, I was a huge fan of the um, Serpentine Dissension EP. Oh, like, truly, truly fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I, I had heard of that through Fred, and that's, I'm sure, how we got connected. Um, but yeah, just unhinged work. <laughs> I appreciated that. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of weird how we even that that's that's how I met Fred. I was looking yep. for uh, people who would listen to it. Uh, I, I think I've I've probably told this, talked about this a bunch on a few episodes. But yeah, I was I looked for people on Instagram by hashtagging like Axis of Advance, and uh, seeing people who actually like the band and i found fred and he was one of the guys that um kind of kept in contact some of the other people were like yeah i like it send a cd and uh, i never really heard from him again wow but, uh, dick fred moves. State, yeah fred mm-hmm. stayed in contact come on guys and here he is <laughs> and then Hold paul's on. like paul's like hey let's do a podcast and i'm like oh yeah okay let's <laughs> do it dude <laughs> Why, why does Paul sound like the guy from Family Guy? Which guy? The, the greased up oh, death yeah, guy? Let's, let's, let's do a podcast. Which, which guy <laughs> Cleveland or what? Guy is yeah, Cleveland. That's got all my stink of the day in it. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh no, Rob's gonna thrive off this. Yeah, I, <laughs> I forgot to mention that uh, when we went to the um, that uh, Wizards of Oz show, and Rob was there, I mentioned he he was asking about the podcast, and I mentioned that Fred said something did like a Family Guy reference to where it was like Bert and Ernie. He goes, "You're yelling again, Bert," <laughs> and I told him about that, and he started laughing his head off. He thought that was really great that Fred referenced uh, Family Guy. <laughs> That's surrounding me everywhere yeah. I go. It, it, it's so funny because this guy, like, he doesn't know anything about old movies or TV shows. All his knowledge of any of that is through Family Guy. So in his mind, all these, like, genius, all these all these skits and, like, references to movies and things are from Family Guy. So he thinks that Family Guy is, like, the most genius thing ever, not really getting that it's from something else yeah family guys like covering in, all the great yeah, in, movies in his in his <laughs> mind family guy is like the ultimate comedy and nothing else really exists outside that <sighs> i never cared for the godfather <laughs> it, in, it insisted upon itself well just like peter i never saw the godfather i know uh, what's his name is in it uh, robert duvall from uh, Falling Down. You guys have seen that movie, right? I think me and Paul, we watched that recently. Yeah, it was good. I, I haven't. I've never Wait, seen that, no. I haven't seen Falling Down. You've never down. seen Falling Godfather. 
Yeah, never seen the God Falling Down. It's from uh, '93. It's Michael Douglas. Um, well, it's one of my favorite movies. It's fucking pretty dope. I would suggest you kind guys of, and any of our listeners to check that. Kind out. of uh, taxi, uh, taxi driver esque. Kind of, but okay. uh, much much more okay, fun. Okay. Not yeah. as not as um, not as tedious as Taxi Driver is. Not as slow. Yeah. Much more happens at a you know rapid. Does pace. he fall down in it? <laughs> Uh, I think he does once. <laughs> okay, that's that's fine then. Yeah, I'll watch it. I don't I don't think that part has anything to do with the movie. I think it's more just like I don't know it, what, it why the hell is a cold falling down. It passes <laughs> the descending. false advertising test if he falls down at least once. He does fall down at least once. No, no, I think he falls down twice. Now that I think. Ooh. About it. Oh. No, All but right, you guys I'm... should check that movie. I thought out. they would save that for the sequel. No, there, there was no sequel. <laughs> Michael Douglas, um, well, I don't want to give it away. It, 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 it's actually quite good. You guys should check it out. Yep, good, good movie. Maybe. Maybe. Um, well, maybe we should get back into uh, listening to this uh, sample that we picked. What was it? Uh, that uh, second song? Yeah, The mm-hmm. War Must Go On. The War Must Go On. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just listen to this really quick so, you know, listeners can listen to it along with us. And, yeah, we'll be right back. Oh, my God. 
from listening to that whole album because couldn't stop it sucked <laughs> yeah it was not good but uh anyway what do you guys think about that well uh, first part sounded like uh yeah but meant thy gift for sure yeah kind of reminds me of um I, I think uh what's what's that band called sacrifice they they did that too but they did it uh, tremoloed. But still, it seems like that riff comes up a lot. That seems to be a favorite of um, like all, I don't want to say imitators, because this band does it a bit differently. But bands that want to sound, um, that want to do the uh, kind of Greek thing, that particular riff comes up a lot. It's almost like the blueprint for the Greek sound, isn't it? Yeah, everything well, honestly, you need in yeah, there. Yeah, 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 you, you, yeah. You kind of get the, uh, like, heavy metal chugging thing, and then you get, like, these little single notes. Down, 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 yeah. And then do, 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 you get, like, the tail end of whatever, and then you get um some of those, like, palm muted. You get that kind of shit. Yeah, all the staples of uh, the Greek riffs. But those Wait. vocals, though. Especially that, that warbling part. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that sounded like Quagmire, but, you know. You know, what you know oh, not again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's and nasty. <laughs> masterful creativity as far as the riffs go. Like, it sounds like it wants to go off the rails, but it never quite does. And like, it just it ends yeah, really, it, really violently, too, which I love. It, it does kind of sound like it's about to fall apart at the seams, but it just holds together the whole way through. Yeah, there's like some discipline and just fucking spirit like holding this shit together. You know, not even just with the wrist, but like 
vocals, especially the drumming and the, you know, the bass playing in there as well. It seems to be, you know, all kind of trying to follow each other with the riff being in the lead. But, um, yeah, it like when I was hearing this and, you know, reading along with, the, you know, some of the lyrics um, as I was listening to uh, the album, it felt like a fucking adventure, like it, adventurous mm -hmm. metal and shit, you know, like where I only get that feeling from a few bands. But, um, yeah, that's this is uh, definitely one of the highlights of the of the album, especially with that last slow riff yeah yeah so fucking yeah. good ring my the ring my bell riff <laughs> oh God, no, no. <laughs> never on here I, I think um something that i was thinking about when i heard this out like probably this and then the next song are my two favorites off this thing but i was thinking um something that's probably the closest comparison for me besides Verathron, is um, a band called Necromancy, also from Greece. Yeah. And it's interesting because they had an out, they had a, a little EP that was recorded in 91, but it didn't come out until 2013 and nobody ever heard it. And that's what's kind of a little bit baffling about it. it this sounds so close to um, Necromancy's Ancient Wrath that was on uh, Nuclear War Now. I don't know if you, any of you guys have uh, heard that one before. Fred, I assume you have. Yeah. Is that the one with the eyeballs? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Big fan of uh, floating eyeballs. Fred and I have had this conversation. Many times. Disembodied yeah. eyeballs, sign me up. Isn't the first Marduk album has a big eyeball on it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. That's why I love it. All right, all right. The original Broken yeah. Hope, the original uh, artwork for Broken yeah, Hope, yeah, yeah, first yeah, album. Yeah. Those are floating it's... eyes on like stilts. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's isn't it like a chessboard with a big eyeball like kinda kinda going by? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, th oh, this really hey. did remind me of necromancy a lot. Weird eyeball crabby islands. Who did it better? Cryptopsy or Sepultura? Uh, Sepultura. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I agree. Well, as far as album covers as far as the cover goes, um yeah, the Sepultura one looks better. That was Dan Swana, wasn't it? Uh, maybe it wasn't I might be wrong about that what the but, artist uh, I, yeah not Dan Swano Dan Seagrave what the hell <laughs> I was like um uh, Bro. the Sepultura one I'm pretty sure was, um, up, was Michael Whalen Whalen Bowler <laughs> yeah what are you pulling a fucking uh, J-Dog yeah <laughs> any of you guys ever watched J-Dog that guy's kind of funny no I can't say that I have that's, haven't had the honor. The guy, he did a really who, good uh, interview with uh, Paul Ledney from Pro yeah, Fanatica. Yeah, he, he did a really good uh, that one. Uh, interview with uh, yeah, Pro Fanatica. Oh, I thought he's, we were talking he's... about somebody from Jersey Shore. <laughs> no, no, he's he's one of the guys that like runs uh, Hell's Headbangers. Oh, oh, of course, yes. You know who I'm talking about? That like buff dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's funny. He, he's kind of funny. He's all right. The buff dude. Yeah, he takes care of their shipping and stuff. He's great to deal with. Because he's buff. <laughs> yep. That's why I deal with him. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, what yeah, what dude, were you saying? So... Yeah. We, n we yeah, never get derailed on this show. I'm, where, I'm stuck where, on where eyeballs. <laughs> Alright, necromancy. Yes, necromancy. Kind of an interesting thing. Uh, in Necromancy, I, I think I just mentioned this already. It's like it, that EP is recorded in 91, and I, I don't know why, but it's not released until 2013 on uh, Nuclear War Now. And a lot of it has these kind of like surfy, they almost sound like Dick Dale or something, but like surfy uh, occult rock kind of riffs. And I feel like that's what this does a lot. It almost feels like. Um, like surf rock in, in in some sections it's not a completely black metal ideal there's a lot of like rock and roll stuff going oh, on here not not Weirdly so enough, much i totally hear that yeah i was gonna yeah. say not so much on that same like surf thing but it's sort of near the beach i was hearing more like <laughs> pirate i was hearing more pirate type shit like mm -hmm. uh, gbk and cauldron black ram 
type yeah, riffing, yeah, yeah, like yeah, with yeah, like kind of shanty ass uh, riffing, you know. That's oh, like the, the soundtrack to Donkey Kong Country, the first world when you're on the pirate ship. Pirate sees a crime. Number two, obviously. That's the one. Maybe like, maybe like early macabre omen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get some macabre omen in there too. Like the uh, what is that? The Olympus demo or something like that? Yeah, it's Olympic something. Yeah. I think it's I, I think it's called I think it's called Olympus. I think it I is. I can't believe Olympus, how long yeah. Macabre Bone have been around. Like I, uh, like they're that, like the first ones, right? They're like fucking like eighty nine or something. Uh, ninety four, I think. Ninety four. Our yeah. friend from uh, our friend from Dungeon Serpent was saying that the Macabre Omen album was mid, <laughs> and for everybody what? to shut up about it. <laughs> I know him personally. I'm gonna give him what for. Yeah, smack yes. him around a bit. Well. Right upside the head. We need new Macabre Omen. It's been too long. Need some new hail. Yeah. The no, but all, that's happening. <laughs> I, I was gonna say also like. When, when in in terms of uh, what this sounds like and when it comes out, it's kind of impressive to kind of uh, comparing it to when a lot of this stuff kind of comes back. I feel like uh, the band Ithaca. Do you guys know who that is? From Greece. Yeah, you showed you showed me them. I don't think so. Um, they have a demo in 2015, and then they have an EP in 2016. Yeah, it seems like but, a lot of that came back, like, you know, on the yeah, side of yeah, 2010s, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, but, like, in the time that this comes out, that the Hail album comes out, there really isn't a whole lot of bands that are doing this, like, occult Greek sound. And then there, it comes out way before this, but, like, uh, Cadiz Cruenta is another one. And yeah. this guy is also involved in uh, necromancy, uh, necromantical invocation, and um, what the hell was that other band called? Uh, Vampirinox. Mm-hmm. That unreleased Vampirinox album was fantastic. Oh yeah, it was fucking awesome. Just like and there, it right out of that classic era. Fantastic. There was another, like another guy in that scene. I think the band was called um, Chaos Baphomet. Are you guys familiar with them? Oh yeah, yeah. I think you showed me that one too. That one's really good. I believe that's the guy from like uh, Empire of the Moon, and I, th I think that one like starts in '97, but they don't have another release until like 2011 or something like that. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah, like it, it's just oh oh it's just, it's the guy from uh, Tatir and uh, Disharmony. You, you, uh, Fred, oh, you know okay, Tatir, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it seems like these guys never really stopped, or, or they, they did kind of stop, but they kind of came, a lot of these bands came back and uh, started doing the, oh, uh, what was that other one too? I think it was Verathron, somebody from Verathron, what was this? Uh, Catavasia, do you guys know who that is? Yeah. Yeah, th this stuff comes out a lot earlier than uh, and any of the Greek bands kind of come back to uh, doing the sound. And it doesn't really sound exactly, not totally Greek. It, all that bass is there, but this definitely feels like it has more of a, a flow of like Worm Flam and um, I forget what the this this other guy's uh, bands were. Um, there was another one that sounded like really, really kind of familiar to this. Uh, what the fuck were they called? Uh. Uh, Legions on Legions Unchained. That was the one. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know that one? No, well, that was the one that I hadn't gotten around to. Yeah, I guess they have a demo in 2002, and then they do an album in 2016. So it comes out like a year before Hale does the uh, does the album. But uh, it, it still has the kind of organic heavy metal feel. But it also still does like the ugly, um, maybe Les Legions Noir or something like that. Yeah, with like this this drumming though, like we all know the Greek sort of like mechanized sort of drumming where it sounds like it's either programmed or on an electric yeah. set, uh, you know, performed there. But you know, he brings like so much life into it, and like there's there's like certain 
points like in the fills and even like the symbol hits the punches or he'll miss and it seems like he forgets that there's another repetition but then he just like keeps flowing with it and and goes with it and it's like you know really refreshing to to hear that especially in those like slower parts i think in the that 60 minute song um yeah. where there's a lot of repetition of that slow part where it seems like he's forgetting there's another two or three counts of that riff yeah and then it seems like the guitar piggybacks off of that where you know you, there's a little flub on the on the drums and it seems like okay that's where we can throw in a little like dive bomb or something into it where he does a little something with the guitar to you know actually bring that like enhance that part rather than like trying to hide it or something because I can't imagine trying to track a a song live that's 16 minutes long and like you're halfway through the song or you're like 75% through the way of the song and you're like fuck I gotta start all over again (laughs) (laughs) you know like he, he probably just you know went with it and was like fuck it you know this is my you know project and which brings me to one of the questions I want to ask all you guys was like do you think it's more limiting or is there more freedom with having you know one man projects uh we'll say in black metal because we we know that there's a lot of those in making something creative and actually Mm. uh worthwhile like this is interesting question yeah i think it depends on the mindset of the members to be honest if uh the member one, of them, if, one man <laughs> one man no dad. but i like what we're what asking which is more which has more freedom or limitation right one man bands or no i was asking you know being a one man band is that more limiting to the music or do you think they have a lot more freedom you know to do to bring their vision uh you know to life to full uh uh you know flesh you know flesh it out i right. think it's i think it's both it's both yeah it has to be because you have you have the freedom to do whatever you want, but you're also limited to what your mind can come up with. You don't have the exact, power of exactly. multiple people. You can only do one so mind much can with only, one person. One, one mind can only come with so much. Yeah. You know, he, that, that, that's that's why it's such an interesting question. It's like because it's basically me and Paul writing everything that we've done in the past, I don't know, 11 years or something. So it's like most of it, practically most of it is me writing on guitar but Paul has so much ideas to change things and to do something else or to trash something and it makes it better I I, I think you you need at least two people I mean from, from my from my perspective you need at least two people because we have a third guy but our third guy really isn't a metal person he kind of just um, for the he's most a, part I would say fills in he's a rock some, some yeah, he's a he's a like more mainstream kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Well, I think one of the advantages of having one person though is you can really just let loose and do whatever you want at any speed you want. And I I think the best example of that is Varg, right, and Burzum. Yeah. Like, 1992 was just an insane year. He practically recorded everything he put out except for Philosophem, which was March '93. Is like within that time frame, anyways, right? Like the amount of stuff you can do is not limited to how fast another person with working with you can go yeah you're you not see that, you see having that to wait on black anyone metal. yeah and you see that in a lot of like one man black metal bands right like drowning the light it's just one guy and look the amount of shit he puts out uh, most of it is pretty good too so i wouldn't say it's necessarily all hyper creative or different but he i haven't heard anything from him that i don't like so he's doing something right yeah because I, I think, you know, Varg would obviously be, like, the epitome of that, of, um, you know, just creative output and actually putting out something that's worthwhile um, and sort of creating a genre that a lot of people just, like, go after that Burzum type of sound, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, even even past Burzum, I mean, Bathory. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the, the dynamism of Bathory. Um, whether or not you like it all, and Lord knows I don't. I mean, 
I have all its albums. I don't like Octagon. I just keep it because I because I keep it. <laughs> but like from what black drink, metal to Viking metal to that? thrash to <laughs> back to back to Viking metal, like he just did whatever the fuck he wanted, right? And he usually did it mostly for what he thought people wanted to hear from Bathory, and that's what was kind of interesting. He kind of treated Bathory as a as a business. He he wasn't much into metal, especially later on. He kind of just did Bathory for the fans and kind of as his day job, right? So it wasn't uh, necessarily at that point, from my impression, uh, a labor of love so much as just paying bills. <laughs> hmm. Which is weird, right? Um, and that's what that that's what Destroyer of Worlds was. Like, Destroyer of Worlds was such a bizarre mishmash of songs. Um, and it was that because he was trying to appease all his fans of the different eras. Yeah, wearing so there's like thrash thin. songs, yeah. there's like kind of blackish stuff in there, there's Viking metal, which made a really inconsistent album. The Viking songs turned out well, but the rest were kind of meh. But then he went back to Nordland and everything was good again. <laughs> <laughs> what about well, I guess you, that's really, Yeah, I was just going to say, I guess that's really what it hinges on, is whether or not you are interested in exploring more than one sound. Like, um, you know, Fred mentioned Drowning the Light, and I'm not familiar with much of what he's done. In fact, I've only listened to a little bit, but it doesn't seem like he's exploring new ideas. Um, so I think if you're looking to push yourself, like like it was mentioned, I mean, you can only do so much with one person's vision. Um, so bringing in somebody else's perspective, somebody else's learned experience and taste is only going to help you grow your sound if that's what you're looking to do. Maybe you're happy doing the you know what you've been doing for a while mm. in fairness to drowning the light though he does have a bunch of other projects so and they all right. have a different sound to them so drowning the light sounds like drowning the light and i think he's just keeping it that way intentionally so yeah once you got the formula and you know it works um you yeah know, why... then everything else he decided to come up with he put in other projects yeah so, and I respect I mean, that, that, that so works. much more than, you know, completely changing direction with one project, especially if it's a, a one man band, like just make another fucking project, you know, name it something else. It's, it's funny, right? Like I, I'm of two minds of that. Like when I listen to bands like Tiamat and Samael that just like veered completely off course on one hand, I'm like, guys, why couldn't you change the band name so that, you know, this band name had the sound I like and then the new band name for your new stuff. And then at the same time, like how, how how narcissistic is that? It's their fucking band. <laughs> like, yeah, you're maybe just their vision to, is you're maybe their vision to... is for the band to change sound. And here I am going, hey, guys, Sumerian cry, please. Yeah, you're just trying to have yeah, a, then plus a context these guys for you. Only have one album that sounds like that, and then they change right after that. You know what I mean? I know, right? Like at this point, Sumerian cry is the odd one out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is. That's the only one that sounds like a Swedish death metal album. And then after maybe they that, should go back and of... change their, the name for that album. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think just Dan just and I Tremblinka. are in the the later camp yeah. where it's like we'll have different band names for the different sort of sounds that we're trying to go for, rather than you know be one of those bands that have a million sounds under the same name. Yeah, mm -hmm. like the yeah, our, the one our, that really got me though is the the one that really got me is Catatonia when they broke mm -hmm. up after Brave Murder Day and then reformed as a rock band but kept the name. I'm like, guys. Guys, come on. You literally broke up and then came back as a new band. <laughs> they got the Completely clout. Completely new. They already had the clout, the audience. <laughs> yeah, they already had the audience. Yeah, they had like a, a Black Doom audience. <laughs> <laughs> and here they are releasing like slow motion Nirvana. <laughs> I felt like uh, November's Doom. Did you ever hear that album? That mm -hmm. felt like a yeah. slow, slow motion Nirvana to me. <laughs> I've only ever really associated that term with, with Catatonia because I made it up for them. <laughs> no, but for never, real, that, that, never got Fred complaining about. about Catatonia or Pantera. We'll be here all day. Oh, I was. Oh was no. Okay. To be clear, Pantera. I actually do like Reunion, Catatonia. I like it. I just don't need to hear it every day. That's all. Pantera. So, that's uh, Pantera. Let me. I will, uh, rag, I will rag on them till the cows come home. All right, <laughs> we're about to do that now. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. with. Uh, I was gonna somehow get to that, uh, but you know we're already here, so <laughs> let, let's hear your piece on Pantera. Why don't you like the money riffs, man? 
<laughs> I don't think it's the riffs, to be honest. Although I do find them generally uninteresting. It's mostly Phil's vocals. Like, the tough guy shit, I'm like, guys, no, please. This is... <laughs> I grew out of this in high school. <laughs> so how do you feel about uh, X Order, uh, the law? I've never really thought that's... The yeah, there's always shit. the big uh, X Hoarder Pantera comparison. Where oh, yeah, Fred, we lost you. Kind of warbled out of the question. Yeah, I think you uh, <laughs> rage quit for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Caps rage. <laughs> what about you, Hope? How do you feel about Pantera? Kind of indifferent. Um, <laughs> there. <laughs> Are you, are you a fan with fame, or, did, or, or did you just totally skip that era? I, I thankfully I did, um, and so for me, like going back to it is just it doesn't really work for me. Um, I mean, I was familiar with some of the hits. I obviously, love the breakdown and domination, um, <laughs> but other than that, it's just never, never hit for me. And I think it is because I just simply wasn't around for it during its heyday. You know, just wasn't on my radar. Yeah, for some reason. To- I'd listen to Pantera, but my home doesn't have more wheels than my truck. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, for some reason, Pantera... And was we lost all our listeners. Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what, what are they, in mobile homes? No, just two of them. <laughs> Which is half of them. Two, two out of the four, yeah. Two out of the <laughs> <Yeah>. four. <laughs> Guys, come back. Yeah, for, for whatever reason, Pantera was always um, kind of... Uh, synonymous with the uh, thrash scene that I kind of came up with or came came up in. Yeah, they're definitely like post thrash, like with that you know type of groove, but also being more on the hardcore side of it of of the of that, where they weren't so much like uh, you know the machine heads and and shit like that. But yeah, um, you could basically say groove metal is thrash, but it, it's just taking the groovy parts of. Uh, of thrash yeah yeah it's it's weird how many thrash bands went that way right like invocator etc etc yeah, and then and then you'll get like uh fucking mashuga and shit too where Please they don't. took that to a whole new level <laughs> that that seems like uh extreme pantera if you ask me even down to the vocals too i saw mashuga yeah. with black label society so that lines up <laughs> did you like did you like were, were you okay <laughs> You make it out alive. <laughs> <laughs> it actually wasn't a bad show. I will say Mashuga is good at what they do. Would I ever turn it on on purpose? No, but I got a free ticket, so I went. What yeah. about the old stuff? Would you ever turn on the old stuff? No. No? No. From Mashuga or Pantera? Uh, Mashuga. Oh. I feel like both of those bands in their ha- like in their early days were actually quite good. Yeah. I don't know how you I don't know how you two feel about um like uh, traditional metal or power metal or anything like that, but uh, Pantera was actually pretty cool uh, traditional metal, I think. Glam Terra is yeah, more entertaining Glam-tera. than regular Pantera. Oh, definitely. I I feel the exact same way. I never found Projects it in the Jungle. That's such a anything. good name. <laughs> that is a good name. I never found Glam Terra to be anything uh, special. Okay. Well, um, I, I think this is something we can all kind of get into, maybe as a as a final thought or one of the final thoughts. Whoa, whoa, um, whoa! Well, hey, whoa, what's, wait. What's that? Did you only have something to say? In, only an hour in. Oh, are we? <laughs> yeah, calm <laughs> down. Oh, okay. <laughs> when did we even start this thing? I'm looking at my clock. I'm like eight. I'm thinking six day, but we started a little bit later. All right. It's like well, clock, maybe we, right? Yeah, uh, it is. My clock is right. We're all on different. Or uh, I think I think Hope's on the same time as us. But um, Paul, so. you wanted to. Ooh. <laughs> I've heard that one before. <laughs> Paul, you mentioned on I think a couple episodes ago, you have some kind of gripe with Thrash, and maybe we can all kind of get onto this. But uh, what is your gripe with Thrash? Why? Uh... I remember hearing this. Yeah. Why so? Oh, what is this? What is this? What well, happened to you in your childhood? I, I totally skipped thrash. That's that's what happened. I went from you know 
the Metallicas, but I didn't go into black metal. I went, you forgot to mention Corn and Slipknot, dude. Yeah, new metal along with that. No <laughs> and, and I guess it makes a little bit more sense uh, with new metal going into slam and brutal death metal and then later coming into, you know, the cannibal corpses and deicides. And I just found that whatever Thrash was trying to do at the time, it was, it seems more like a transitionary genre than, um, you know, tra- trying to get to how extreme death metal is already, you know, like, I feel like it's, it's heavy metals better, you know, where it was coming from. And then death metals better, you know, exactly where that's where they were going with uh, that type of sound, that speed and, you know, everything. But it's not the destination, that... it's the journey. Mm. <laughs> not for me. It's the friends <laughs> you make along the way. Yeah, so you, you don't think, I, well, this is the way I, I maybe think of it, I just thought of this, but don't you think that thrash is kind of, uh, nope. Yeah, just. <laughs> along the, uh, just along the lines of where heavy metal is going, just no. and uh, where, where it ends up, but kind of, I, it, not not like not even a few years later than a lot of the uh, heavy metal bands. But I, I feel like I like speed metal, that direction of where heavy metal was going, rather than the thrash. A lot, I like that a lot more. Just just because where that went into more of like power metal and shit that I. Um, you know, like for the novel TV at the time, but now it's, it seems, uh, like it's just stuck with me and it's always something I'll be listening to. Um, but yeah, I feel like speed metal, I, I connect with that a lot more, you know, I can try to find one of those albums and, you know, eight times out of 10, I'll love it. Whereas thrash there's, it's slim pipping, uh, slim pickings for me, you know, like there's cranium, which borders on speed metal. And thrash because you know speed metal sentence and you know slaughter and all that and then you know coven you know some bands that you show me along the way um holy terror and shit like that but i know that you have a you know vast experience and knowledge about all these uh lesser known uh thrash bands that you know i can't really get into it all sounds the same you know to me Have you guys ever heard Cranium? Do you know who that is? Is it Cranium right. with a K? No. Nope. No, it's Cranium no? with a C. Right. No, I don't know. You don't know who so. that is? Uh, I guess Cranium. we know what episode 14 you know is going to be. <laughs> right then. <laughs> I didn't hear anything from Fred. So, Fred, you don't know who Cranium is either? I don't think so. Not off the top of my head. Bruh. <laughs> okay. All right. It was a good episode. <laughs> yeah, so cra- so cranium, it is. If you're looking it up, it's cranium from Sweden. It is uh, the drummer from Otumno, and you guys both know who Otumno is, right? Oh, these guys—they were on Necropolis Records, weren't they? Yes, they were on Necropolis. Yeah, Records. yeah. Okay, I remember this. I'm looking them up now. No, I don't recognize it. You like uh, their wigs? Yeah, yeah, I remember this. <laughs> I, I think they're wearing wigs. I'm not well, at least two of them. For sure, <laughs> the guy on the right is wearing a wig. Chainsaw Demon too. But yeah, okay. So this is uh, the main. The main guys are from Dawn. And dun dun dun. Yeah, it's from. <laughs> they're, they're the main guys from Dawn, and they don't do a. When did they do that? The the Dawn shit in like ninety three, ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, around there. Yeah, around there. But Cranium starts as kind of a um, throwback thrash, but it's pretty early for throwback. It comes out in 1997. Um, mm. If you if if anybody hasn't heard this, it really is uh, some of the best thrash we'll ever hear because you get kind of... Um, this is what turned me uh, to actually listening to thrash a little bit more. It's goofy. It's over the top. The lyrics are... It's extreme as fuck. It's extreme. The lyrics are fucking stupid, but in a really awesome way. <laughs> yeah, these guys are Swedish. They act you like know, they're Fred, German. Yeah, Fred laughed last time when I said um, uh, Maze of Doom was boring, but in a good way. And I'm saying Cranium. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying Cranium is stupid in a great way, in a really good way. In a metal way. You have a track too. Just look at that title, Nymphomaniac Nuns. Uh, you're gonna get a lot from this kind of stuff. Taxi Terror. 
<laughs> Full moon Samurai Satan. God, this reminds me of Death Witch. They have some of the stupidest fucking lyrics, but they're great. You know what? I, I, I'm going to say this in uh, all confidence. I guarantee you Speed Metal Sentence is the best Rash album you'll ever listen to. It's true. Well, whoa, damn. whoa, whoa. All it's right. true. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Ooh, hey, hey. Past everything else, past all the classics, uh, this is the one. Once you get past all the classics, sure, we know them. We love them. But if you haven't heard this. That's just nostalgia. You're, you're not quite living yet. I'll believe it this when is, I feel it. Yeah, I'll blow no, all that no, no, thrash no, out no, your but, butt. Hope, believe me, you will <laughs> feel it. This is one that came, this is one that I heard uh, like in middle school, and uh, I remember listening to this like before school one time, and uh, I think I heard my dad saying, "Hey, this sounds like uh, Scorpions, but uh, really angry." <laughs> 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 it's fucked. That's a Listen great description. To, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen to Cranium. It really is the shit. But, Paul, are there any albums that you have gripes with, like, in particular, with uh, Thrash, or is it just the whole genre in particular? I think like, the uh, whole genre, uh, I, I probably don't even get past a few, you know, well, minutes are, of a song or something. Well, are and we, I'll are we not talking give it about stuff from the 80s, or are we talking about more, like, retro thrash kind of stuff oh the older stuff but definitely the fucking you know revocations and shit like that you know and i don't it, think and, i would consider revocation to be like, yeah and even <laughs> your opinion on thrash on revocation there's something no, like, don't do don't do that that's more of like a hardcore band or some kind and of like, like um screamo core die uh, fucking bar band or something yeah and then like all the <laughs> the other revival bands you know the ones around here too like i don't know it's just everyone around here i think was coming along with that um, you know, trend as it was coming along, and I was just sort of opposed to it because I was hearing shit that was a lot heavier, a lot faster, a lot better, you know. So I think that may have something to do with it as well. You prefer, it sounds to me like you prefer speed metals, like uh, trad metal approach. Yeah, exactly. Versus, yeah, versus um, thrash is kind of a uh, punk approach. Did you ever have a punk phase? Was that ever a thing? Uh, oh, no. Uh, I feel like I've come into punk a little bit later and more deeper into the subgenres than, like, the classic stuff. Interesting. So you... That's interesting. So you like punk, but you won't go back to thrash and enjoy it. Huh. Yeah, there's there's only a few, you know, gem of albums that I'll, I'll really like. Um, like that... Uh, what was that a band you showed me? It was early on, along with Cranium, uh, Eccentric or something like that. Eccentrics. Oh, Eccentrics. Yeah, they they were. I remember when I, I showed you that and you didn't like it, and I was like, I got mad because you didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took some time, and the the that uh, Coven, as well. I was listening to that, uh, you know, I think last week as well. Um, you guys remember Eccentrics for whose advantage? Yeah. For whose advantage anyway? They sounded a lot like Metallica, I thought. What about Invocator, Paul? Have you heard Invocator? I'm sure he likes Invocator. Well, isn't that more bordering <laughs> along Death Thrash? And it's, it's like more, it's more of a yeah. technical, technical thrash. The yeah, that's are like all deathy, that's but... like that's like suffocation wanting to make a thrash album. That's what that kind of is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel um, like oh, I like yeah. that. And a, then you a lot. also have the really European vocals. <laughs> well, because yeah, don't like, don't get me wrong, I, I love like the fucking German bands. You know, Sodom Creator. You know, Assassin maybe. Yeah, dude, Assassin's fucking great. That that song you show me, Bullets, like that. Bullets, bullets, bullets. That's fucking like extreme. That that's what I like. Like it, the most extreme, you know, reaches so you may, can get may, with the may, genre. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's more of the. Well, I'm kind of, I I kind of don't exactly know which bands you're talking about. You'd have to be uh, very like, you have to be very. Uh, what the fuck is the word? Yeah, like precise, like which what what bands you're talking about? Because I would, for this whole time you were talking about this, I'm thinking of fucking Flotsam and Jetsam, and I still think you would like that album, the fucking Doomsday for the Deceiver. Yeah, I think I did listen to that one, and that yeah, was probably one of them that was you know, not really doing it for me. <laughs> we sound like well, those it... people who are trying to convince somebody that they've only ever tried the wrong strain of weed. 
Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. You just, you gotta try this one. That you was spice, man. haven't found the one yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's what I'm saying. I want to hear, I want to hear from Paul. Okay, Paul. That, that'll be the, my homework. Give us, give us the bad albums. Can you give us a few bad thrash albums? No, they're just not even worth remembering for me. I, I oh, have wow. to do some, I have to do some God homework. Damn. <laughs> He just doesn't want to get flamed in the comments by the four <laughs> listeners. Okay, uh, Whiplash on. is a good one, dude. Whiplash is power and pain. I brought that up on last episode. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying like there's there's albums that you show me because it seems like you're, you know, seasoned in it and you know which ones to show me that I would like. You know, like Anvil Bitch was really good too. You liked Anvil Bitch? But yeah. See, that's surprising. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it, I don't know. It's it, there's just I don't know. I'm Am just I trying to figure out what what's one you don't like. Testament is that one? Testament yeah, definitely Testament. Leipzig? Yeah, definitely okay. Testament. I got that. I got that. Oh, do you like rigor mortis? Oh, I love rigor mortis. We love rigor mortis. There you go. We love rigor mortis. We that that's the thing. We like the good stuff. And, and like like, like blood really feast is really good too. Yeah. Yeah, blood feast is great. For for me, it's the vocals. Sometimes thrash bands, if they're a bit too clean. And it's weird because I do like some clean vocal thrash bands, but if they're too clean or just a certain way, I don't, I don't dig it. And I've never been a fan of group vocals. The gang shouts, no. Yeah, no, it's not really my thing. <laughs> Did you guys like uh, Paradox? That album, Heresy. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember. Yeah. I know I've heard it, but well, it's been a while. I, well, if it's been a while, I probably didn't dig it that much, but. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I brought this up. My thrash knowledge is still something I'm building. Oh, really? Uh, do you know Holy Terror? You ever heard of that yeah. band from uh, yeah. LA? Cool band. Yeah, I love them. They're they're probably uh, my. So, Holy Terror or uh, Cranium? For me? Yeah. Uh, probably Holy Terror. Yeah, I think the same, but. That's not uh you know that's not saying a lot because Holy Terror is the best thrash band ever. Yeah, since we're talking about this, uh, Hope, what are, are there any thrash albums you think are uh, worth mentioning? Straight up thrash, maybe any year, I guess. Um, I would like to draw attention to one of my favorite albums in recent years. Um, that actually my fiance found, so all credit to him. Um, but do you know the band Demoniac? out of Chile? No, I know the demoniac that was Dragon Force. Yeah, That's I know that I too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, first of all, Chile is just an incredible scene right now um, in thrash, in death, in black metal. They just, heavy metal, they, they do it all. Um, but there's an album called So It Goes that came out recently by Demoniac. I think it was, I think it was 2020 or 2019. Um, just brilliant and um it has clarinet so if i don't know if that doesn't convince you not to listen to it then i don't know what would it's great very very good i thought for sure you were gonna say speed whore (laughs) yeah i did like speed whore but i find i mean that's more speed than thrash i find the line but i find the line between the two to be very very thin i often can't distinguish between the two yeah, I've never heard Demoniac, uh, or this Demoniac. I'll have to check them out. Do you guys like know Ari the other Kingdom. Demoniac? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the pre-Dragon Force. Because uh, that was basically just like power metal and then like black metal vocals. And if you look at the first album cover, I think it's Sam Topman like banging some fat chick, but like the, the image is all <laughs> distorted. That's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, black power metal. <laughs> I could be convinced to check that out. Some there's some okay stuff on there. I I wouldn't say it's uh, totally necessary, but it's fun. What about you, Fred? Are there any um, are there any thrash albums that you would uh, totally defend as uh, some of the top contenders? Uh, here we go. For me, my go-to's <laughs> tend to be Invocator. Uh, Excursion Demise. That's a good Mor- one. Morbid Saints. Spectrum of Death is a good one. Yep. Uh, yep. Black I Shepherd. About them last time. Black Shepherd. Immortal Aggression is one of my favorites. 
It's a it's a Belgian band that sounds South American. I don't know if I've ever heard of them. Immortal Shepherd. Uh, Black Shepherd. Black Immortal Shepherd. Aggression is the album. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. Yeah, and I've the, I've never heard of them. The cover is just, hey guys, let's get H.R. Geiger to do our cover. Yeah, that's a great idea. Shit, he charges how much? Hey, singer, you do it. <laughs> and he just draws his own Geiger cover. <laughs> yeah, do do your own Geiger cover. I get it. Yep. Uh, the cover is terrible, but it's a fantastic album. It's it's a little one dimensional. Like it has two settings: start and stop, and everything is just like full bore. Uh, but and the vocals are this like shouted, echoing South American sort of styled uh, vocals, and I. I just love that album. Good, boring, or bad, album. boring? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's boring in a good way. <laughs> I love a lot of early Brazilian thrash. I mean, like Fred and I have had yeah. this conversation. Um, like Dorsal Atlantica, which is probably what the first to do it in yep. Brazil. Are they For the sure. first? Because I, I keep hearing about that band, not just from Fred, but I, I've, I've heard it from some other people. There, uh, there were a few. I mean... Uh, Volcano was around the same time as well, mm-hmm. and um, this really obscure one, uh, Death Angels, that recorded a demo, I think, in 83, that was pretty death thrashy. What did you guys um, think of uh, Overdose? They did the split with... Um, the split with Sepultura? Yeah, Sepultura was uh, 85. I, I know I've always preferred the Sepultura side. <laughs> Oh, of course, of course. That's that's yeah. the one to prefer. No, I, I think it was the vocals that didn't do it for me on that. So, are, Fred, you you said you're not really a heavy metal guy, right? I I like it and I appreciate it, but it's not something I need to listen to every day. No. What the fuck? Hope, are you into any of that kind of <laughs> stuff like the traditional heavy metal? You know what, Paul? You don't I, like thrash. Yeah. You be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, but I really only started that journey within the last year or so, um, and it has been so much fun. I mean, I always knew, you know, the classics, um, Priest, you know, Merciful Fate, stuff like that, but um, branching out from there and even just discovering, like, some newer trad metal and heavy metal bands has been so much fun. Some of my most favorite stuff in the, in recent years has been that. What about Heavy Load? Any Heavy Load fans Oh, here? yeah. You like Heavy Load? Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. yeah. Another Saturday night, and it all feels right. Sweden has a really, really great um, heavy metal scene, at least from what I can tell as a beginner. <laughs> um, but just some really great bands coming out of there right now. Who's coming out of there now? I know Century is coming out of there right now. We kind of talked about them a little bit on the last episode. Uh, I think that guy was in uh, Horror. Yeah. Um, there's a band that came out recently called Eisenhand that was really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Eisenhand was really good. Yeah. They are great. Um, I think Tiran is from Sweden as well. Um, they're a lot of fun. And their lyrics make no sense. That's the best part. It's just like, you know, English words a... that sound really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All these guys seem the to come kind. from like a black or death metal uh, background, and then go back and then try to play heavy metal, which is kind of interesting. There was a band called, I believe they're called Arma. Do you remember how to spell that band, Paul? No. <laughs> I, I think they're from like I think they're from Chechnya or or no they're from Poland I don't remember it Serpentine uh, what the fuck was the name of that album fucking uh, Terminus covered them do you remember what I'm talking about Paul Arma oh yeah 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 but they're like you blasting spell... and shit yeah how the hell do you spell Arma oh you know what's another good one too uh, when it comes to like modern um, trad metal kind of mixing things uh, hell uh, what the hell were they called. Demon bitch, you guys know Demon bitch? Oh yeah. yeah. It's easier to spell. Yeah, that. <laughs> What's that? So it's easier to spell. Yeah, yeah, it is easier. I don't know how to spell fucking Arma. Demon bitch, one word. But Demon bitch, yeah, they were really awesome. Yeah, they were fun. The Hell Friends, and then the uh, what was that other one they did? Uh, 
the White Magician project that was really good too. Yeah, but some of the best heavy metal shit is the new wave of British heavy metal, like fucking Crucifixion, Angel Witch, and you know mm -hmm. all those fucking great bands and shit. They just demon. And does Prey maybe? Mm hmm. I love I feel Satan. Like that's... Oh, Satan! Yeah, of course. They're fucking amazing. Saw Satan at. The um, were either of you guys at Hell's Heroes this year? No. Nope. Okay. No, we we um... don't we don't leave this uh, warehouse. <laughs> it's locked from the outside it's true yeah I saw Satan at Hell's Heroes which has uh, arguably the best lineup for a festival I've ever seen that um, headlining was uh, Triptychon doing a Celtic Frost set and uh, oh, Hell yeah. Hammer oh, Triumph of Death. and Possessed um, but yeah so Satan played which was also just a cool bonus but Brian Ross was such an asshole <laughs> And it broke my heart because he like he yelled at the crowd for crowd surfing, and just kind of went on a weird little like freedom rant for a minute. It was just like ah, oh, just shut up and play, you know. You know, some some people are here to enjoy the show, not to get trampled on. <laughs> Basically, except he's British. <laughs> <laughs> Oi! Stop body surfing. <laughs> get your bum off my head. Arse. He went on a f Arse. He went on a f <laughs> yeah, he went on a freedom rant. What does that mean? Uh, he went on something about, um, if I recall correctly, it was something about COVID, which was silly because it's 2023 and it's not really in the, the zeitgeist. We've we moved on. <laughs> yeah, we've moved on, Brian. Get with the times. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that reminds me. We we saw me and my friend saw a stand up show with uh, Jamie Kennedy. Oh, that thought I was thinking of exactly. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, you went there too. Do you guys know who Jamie? Ken Do Canadians know who Jamie Kennedy is? <laughs> You're better That's off Canadian. not knowing. The comedian? I don't think so. That's no, he is an actor. Uh, I think the most popular movie that he was in was um, Malibu's Most Wanted, where he played. Oh, like, just uh, Google. Okay, yeah, I recognize him. You recognize this guy? Yeah. Yeah, he, he went on, th this was like last, uh, late last year, and he's going on this like red pill Trump comedy. And it's like, dude, th th this is, this is 20, th this is like 2016 comedy for a 2022 audience. <laughs> and it just doesn't make any sense. But at the same time, I, I don't really like stand up comedy anyways, but if you're just a flop, you're just a flop. No, there's something about, like, actors who are, you know, comedians, and they seem to just reference movies or scenes that they've, you know, who they connect to, or mm -hmm. rather than saying jokes. Like, I feel the same thing with, like, Pauly Shore and uh, Ken Young from Hangover and shit. Like, they just seem to be referencing movies. It's like, I'd rather just watch, I'm not watching a screening, I'm here to see some fucking jokes, you know, laugh and shit. I'm wondering if they know that their stuff isn't any good, because are, are, are wouldn't no, they be they, making enough money from yeah, their movies that they, they got don't like, have to do that? They have like yes men, you know. It's like, oh, they they'll laugh like, you know, Ken all all he has to say is hangover, and then he'll get like a, you know, an automatic fucking you know please laugh sign, above everyone you know above the stage for everyone to laugh you know rather than I mean actually when you make that much joke. money doing it, do you care if you're any good? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I would. I would. Think I tell so. bad jokes for free. God, I'd do it for money. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole idea. We're doing this for. Free. We're we're kind of just. Hope I heard you laughing. It's rude. Well, <laughs> McDonald's is on its way. You know, we're just signing. You know, sponsorship the, agreement. The T's and the I's. Yep. Yeah, Smack Donalds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get the the buns, the bun boys. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with that. They're gonna name a combo <laughs> after us. Yeah. Can I have the Buns Boys combo? <laughs> buns and fries. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just a bun. It's just a bun and fries. What's, it, what's in your burger? Nothing. It's great. Just like the podcast. It has no content, just like the <laughs> podcast, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, maybe we should get back to uh, this album. Um, a, little, a little thing I wanted to say was, like, I was looking to... Lis I was listening to, like, App Horror... Because the logo looked a bit similar, but there's like 
no like the comparison the, uh, to it at Italian all. Uh, no, the Singaporean band, Abhor. Oh, Abhor. Sorry, I thought I said Abhor. Yeah, so I was, I was like, I was seeing that the logos were pretty similar. I was like, hmm, maybe, you know, he's doing a nod to that. And, you know, I haven't listened to him in a while, but when I did, it was nothing like this shit. Because <laughs> 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 they're just blasting the whole time and shit. But um, I was also going to bring up, like, this is a, a sort of merger album between scenes of, like, or maybe even just bands and sounds, genres, like, obviously the Beherit and the Greek scene coming together. Do you guys have any other bands that come to mind that bring some scenes or sounds, genres together um, that exists or something that you would like to hear, um, you know, for, for bands coming along now to create no. something like this? No? <laughs> <laughs> huh. probably think of something if you give me a minute we got five we'll wait (laughs) 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 i'm just kidding what baba do baba what bamboo so not anything to do with your question but it may remind me i saw sodom back in like 2005 or so with fintroll opening it's a fucking weird combo (laughs) fintroll sick do they play troll hammer on I don't know. I just wanted to see Sodom. <laughs> <laughs> was it a fest or just a show? Well, no, it's just a show. It was just a show, and you have half the crowd just like in kilts? fucking <laughs> kilts and like drinking horns and fur, and the rest is in leather jackets, <laughs> reeking of beer. I'm like, guys. Yeah, we we went to a fucking uh, folk metal show, and there were guys in fucking kilts too. I, I never expected guys would do that. Dude, that, yeah. that show was oh, yeah. awesome though. <laughs> you ever been to a Wardruna show? No. Oh my I can, god. I can only imagine. Yeah, it's. I mean, you got the like the actual Viking larpers who come out, and I'm glad you're having fun, but like, fuck. You, Leave the you foam know? sword at home. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> Can't see shit with the antlers in front of me. Yeah, we, we saw. <laughs> we saw Corpic Lani in what was that? 2011, Paul. Yeah, them and Tear. Yeah, we saw Corbett Lani and Tear and yeah. a band from Estonia who was actually pretty good. Um, That's the soul. That's the soul. That's the total. Yeah, they were really good. They were great. Yeah, but we're. I, I, Go ahead. Yeah, there, there's a bunch of dudes in kilts, and I remember there was like some thrash kid with a destruction t shirt. He's too young to drink, but somebody spilled beer in the middle of the pit where everybody's pitting, and everybody moved to the side. And this kid went into the middle of the room and he slurped it all up. Wow. Yeah, he got like Spider Man stance close to the floor and just put his lips right there. Spider Man. Yeah. Spider Man. It. It'd be great if he was singing that to himself as he did it. <laughs> yeah, in his head, he's doing that. Spider Man. Whatever a spider. It's like whatever you can do in your head to make it okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we were like uh, well, shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of people just doing the kick dance and shit. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, they were doing that. They, they were doing that like uh, I don't even know what you call that. The fucking can can. <laughs> the the Tetris song. <laughs> How do you guys feel about the the rowing boat thing that people are doing at the? It's probably just as bad as rather, uh, the I'd people doing the push ups. Yeah, that's my take on it too. <laughs> push ups doing during uh, Frozen Soul. Yeah, yeah. the oh, maggot stomp shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, I think me and Paul probably have our own uh, opinions on Maggot Stomp. Personally, I, I find a lot of that stuff really boring. But mm. uh, Hope, what do you what do you think about the Maggot Stomp stuff? We we've kind of talked about it a little bit uh, previously, but um, did yeah, we? What do you think I, about... That doesn't surprise me because I do have feelings. Um... <laughs> yes, yeah, say blood not... incantation or, or or all those kinds of bands. Uh, you what know, do you think I about I that don't kind of mind. Stuff? blood incantation i prefer star spawn and everything that they've done since then has just kind of felt a uh, little phoned in Mm -hmm. um it's kind of like watered down time ghoul which is cool they do it well i've heard Um, that too i've heard the time ghoul reference yeah um but as far as like the maggot stomp because i don't think they're maggot stomp um as far as like no i think they're on dark descent or something 
Yeah. Um, but as far, as far as like Frozen Soul, 200 stab wounds. Yeah. Sanguisuga Bog. Yes. They're probably um, the worst. <laughs> I hate that shit. I do. And it's not that I don't, you know, understand the appeal. I get it. Is it's it because they're fucking... hardcore guys? I feel I like think that's, that's a part, big of, part it. of it. That's you know, a big and, part of it. And I get it. Like, it's fun. It's hardcore or it's, um, you know, caveman riffs. Who doesn't love that shit? I'm a war metal fan. Like, I am not one to talk about, you know, um, stupid shit. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm actually wearing a wear goat shirt right now. Are you? Oh, really? Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, but as far as, like, those bands go, I just, it is it is the fans that kind of turns me off a little bit. But I do think it's the hardcore approach to the OSDM. And then kind of, like, oh, and then there's the merch core aspect of it, too. Mm-hmm. Like, the merch that oh, they sell God. is just so fucking stupid. Yeah, they have, just, like, a whole yeah. catalog of shirts before they have an album out. <laughs> it feels like they don't take themselves seriously, so why would I take you seriously, you know? Yeah, at least there the was... GOAT guys are down to, you know, with that shit. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, but those are all real metal guys. They're, they're doing something that's uh, a little bit more popular, but I don't I don't think that really matters as long as your uh, heart is into it, even if you are doing something more popular. Even like um, Antichrist Seed Machine, I mean, they're opening for fucking uh, Emperor and stuff. Yeah. But they right. were excellent. I did see those guys. Well, yes, they're great. great. I think we're we're coming up on that time, so I just wanted to see if anyone I had any. I offended you, Paul. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Um, but yeah, do you guys have any last thoughts on this album? Uh, before that, I wanted to. I forget what the hell I was gonna say. Something about Bruh. sex. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. <laughs> Paul, you know what I'm talking about here. There was a video, I think. Either like Paul's just looking at his TV. watch and sweating. Yeah, I know. That it was sample. either Banger TV or Relapse or something. They did a video where, like, it's saying Suabog and Frozen Soul, and they have to guess oh, yeah. what band logos uh, are showing up on screen. Yeah. And the Psy logo came up, and nobody out of these two bands could <sighs> tell what the Psy logo was. I mean, I think that probably tells you something, doesn't it? It does, but it also doesn't surprise me. No. (laughs) Maybe it's not so surprising. All you can do is sigh. Yeah, yeah, always the sigh joke. (laughs) Anyways. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so last thoughts on this uh, this Hale album. Check it out. Good shit. Check out all of, act light all of Duramaster's projects. Uh, Legacies Unchained, Worm Phlegm. Um, Especially Worm Phlegm. Fun, yeah, yeah. Fun, fun side note. So in Legacies Unchained, there was a guy called Kutchek Gorealis. And he had a project named Misanthropical Pain Forest. Uh, and despite that stupid name, really good. And he had a project called Testorage, which was kind of a parody of heavy metal. Testorage. <laughs> And it was all just about working out of the gym. Rage. And it was fucking funny. Um, weird guy. Anyways, yeah. Dirt Master. Hail. Good stuff. I like it. I love it. One of my favorites from post-2000. Dan? Yeah. Who, my two. What? I, I, who, <laughs> me? Am I supposed to go now? Yes. Well... I mean, is there anything any we haven't really talked about worm phlegm at all? Is there anything we can like a, a last like a quick thing anybody can say about worm phlegm? Because I, 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 I think I you actually guys bought a copy of the LP in January. Funeral doom. That's worth your time. That's what I would say about worm phlegm. Most extreme funeral doom album to where terminus extreme metal podcast showed me them showed their listeners and it's by far the best torture doom album out there and it makes sense that dirt master was a part of uh that project because they seem to have some midas touch so i got to definitely check out the rest of the bands that they're uh you know acquainted with i was reading an interview with uh not Dirt Master, but the guy who was playing guitar on the Worm Plum album. Mm-hmm. And he was saying, like, um, 
Oh, I, this is the guy from Corpses. You guys have probably heard of them, right? Yeah. That newer death metal band. And they're yep. pretty cool. I think Terminus did a, a review on them. It was really good. Um, but he was saying that, like, Worm Flame is the most chaotic of uh, the Dirt Master project. But he also said, like, at the time, in 2003, I think, he was saying that, like, Worm Flem is the most chaotic. Does that make sense, that Worm Flem is the most chaotic out of all these projects? L lyrically, it's, like, bizarre stream of consciousness torture stuff. It's... Yeah. Uh, in that sense, I guess. Um, even to just be playing that slow and to bring that genre to its like limits as well as it seems like playing that slow you will lose count even for the musicians playing it of how hypnotic it is so it seems like there's a lot of improvision of you know improv going on with uh you know between the the musicians the drummer and the guitarist you know to create this shit so it, it does you know have a sort of structure to it but it's like so slow that they have to fill maybe, in maybe those you gaps won't notice the yeah chaoticism. yeah exactly i i guess i would say with hail um even though it has a big greek uh influence dirt master's sound with all his bands always have a very very uh particular <laughs> kind of writing and a very particular kind of guitar tone um and it you know it, it's just interesting that a lot that this stuff comes out before a lot of the uh, greek uh like retro stuff kind of comes out and, and not just that but yeah it, it really is uh, something on its own you know you get uh, the like art go parts and you get the fucking um like heavy metal stuff and uh, a lot of the mid pace uh just like Verathron kind of riffs. It's uh, really cool. You know, I would uh, totally suggest anybody to listen to this thing, especially like if you're interested in uh, kind of the lineage of um, of where this this sound comes from and where it goes and when it comes back. So, yeah. Yeah, this is standing tall next to, you know, Burzum along with, the you know, these one-man projects to achieve something like this is like no small feat and to be as primitive and barbaric as this shit is with also having that melody that evil heavy metal melody is like the perfect combination that I don't know why anyone didn't do it before or isn't doing it now like this is it seems like a like a sort of timeless album at least to me i'm gonna be listening to this you know until i can anymore and, forever and, ever <laughs> and ever. yeah and you know <laughs> even down to like um the cover art the vocals i think one of the guys from worm Flem does the cover art you know obviously for the worm Flem and for this and it just it, ha it just brings like this whole setting to what you're gonna be listening to it's like very like swampy and it, like i said earlier it's like an adventure that you're almost, gonna be going on it's almost poppy in a way it's it's kind of easy to listen to yeah it's it does not yeah, feel for, like an for, hour for, for for anybody yeah it doesn't feel like it's an hour and um one of my hot comparisons to this was i don't know how you guys are gonna feel about this but it seems a bit sludgy to me like yeah I can hear some of that yeah I was feeling particularly three songs from not necessarily a sludge band but a band that takes some influence from sludge uh, Dan knows them uh, Ramlord with the uh, Total Doom you know what I'm yeah, saying you guys know Ramlord no I don't they were like uh, they were like a Celtic Frost meets crust punk kind of thing. They're actually very good. They didn't last for too long, but they're uh, they had a good EP. Yeah, stench of fallacy. I think fallacy. The, 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 the the song um, the song Total Doom in particular, right? Yeah, that's that's the one. There's uh, that's the one. That's the one. 
the 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 first song as well, Wolves of Isolation, and then, that's a really good comparison. Yeah, exactly. Total that, Doom. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Ramlord. Yeah. Yeah, you guys got to check that out. Total yeah, Doom from Ramlord. Um, something I for I, I guess I didn't mention, but I meant to uh, was a band called the Whale. Whale. Oh my God! Whale. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Oh, yeah. what am I? Yeah, <laughs> huge fan of Whale. So yeah, I, I guess. Like... Yeah, I guess this band comes out in 2009, and they're kind of on the verge of the retro death thing, but they still have. Um, like the Sam Ale and the Necromantia uh, influence coming through. And I think they actually mentioned Hale as an influence um, in particular. But they also do they also do shit that sounds like uh, Fresco Lungs uh, fucking Flegathon. So they have like some rock and roll stuff. They have Doom. They have like this slow black thrash metal thing. It's, it's really cool. I, I would suggest anybody also listen to Whale as well. Yeah. Well, on that note, um, all hails to hail. And, uh, yeah, that's the end of this one. Stay in school. Don't do drugs. Eternal hails. Fred, give us a That's Nasty one more time. Oh, that's nasty, 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 nasty. Welcome.